combination of factors. I think, firstly, NAMPAC was about a 20 billion turnover business. We're now about a 16 or 17 billion, so we've exited all the non-performing operations. And then the second issue is that we, we start to see our African strategy and the expansion in Africa come through. So Africa has grown by 60% in profit terms, and that's helped offset what is really quite pedestrian growth in both South Africa and the UK. So I think it's a combination of those two factors. We don't have any loss makers anymore to deal with. And secondly, we're getting the growth out of Africa. So of the businesses that you're going to march forward with uh, going into the future, uh, which ones are you seeing the most potential in, in order to leverage off the growth that you're seeing now into the future? Yeah, we, we've tried to replicate NAMPAC in South Africa in all the countries in Africa in which we operate. So at the moment, the fastest growing territory for us is Angola, where we have a big beverage can facility that's growing very nicely. Uh, that was a year ago doing 20 million beverage cans a month. We're now producing 50 million beverage cans a month in Angola and selling them there to the likes of Coca-Cola and so on. So we're seeing a lot of growth in, in Angola, Nigeria, Kenya, etc. And we, we really do plan to continue investing heavily in Africa because there's a lot of growth there. Uh, it already makes up about 15% of our profit and about 12% of our turnover, so the margins are better there as well. So it really does make sense to keep getting, you know, to keep targeting and growing in Africa. As you say, you spent a lot of capital going into Angola and setting up that beverage can manufacturing site, uh, and you say that you are planning on spending further capital in Africa. How much is earmarked uh, for Africa right now? Yeah, well, as an example, in Angola, we spent 165 million US dollars, so just over a billion rand, setting up that facility. Um, to expand it, we'd need to spend another $60 million just to add another line, and we'll probably have to do that in the next year or two. So there's a lot of growth we're expecting in Angola. We also plan to add other NAMPAC types of products there, so crates and closures and labels and things like that. Um, but certainly, if you look at our capex going forward, between 30 and 40 percent of all our capex going forward is going into Africa, even though it only makes up 15, 20 percent right now of our business. You are targeting 25 percent revenue uh, coming from Africa going forward, but to just looking at some of the results, there have been some problem children. Uh, of course, Africa not an homogenous market, so there have been some areas where you have seen a weak performance. Uh, anything particular that you need to take remedial action with going forward? Yeah, I think generally African countries have all done well. The exception has been Malawi this year, who've had all their forex problems, as you're aware. They've then had a change of government, and they've had a devaluation of the kwacha. So we're expecting Malawi profits this year to be lower than previously. But with the exception of Malawi, all the other territories are doing quite well, and we're looking at quite significant growth. So, yeah, I mean, 60% growth in profits year on year. There can't be too many underperformers in there. In terms of South Africa, still 75% of trading profit coming through from South Africa. So the company is still very much a South African based company. Uh, you, you've had some a strong performance coming through from canned consumption and that is a, a positive sign going forward. Uh, but still underperformance uh, from metals and glass. I, I assume that as a result of the construction industry right now and where it's at. Yeah, I think what, what we're seeing in most markets in South Africa, obviously some markets are up like beverage and beer is a little bit up. But in general, we're finding most markets fairly flat or small growth, 1% or 2% growth. If you look at Tiger Brands' results last week, you know they, they talked about how difficult the markets are. And, and Tiger Brands and those sorts of companies are huge clients of ours. So if they lose market share to imported baked beans, say, we don't sell the can to, to Tiger. So we're very dependent on how they are doing. And the market at the moment, I think most of our clients are saying to us, is fairly flat. It's not going backwards, but it's pedestrian growth and, and that's the outlook is pretty much one or two percent growth in South Africa going forward. But it is our base, as you say, and we really have to look after this market. It's, it's one thing to grow in Africa, but we've got to look after our base, and it, you know, it, it does remain the mainstay of our profitability. How do you protect margins in this environment where you've got lackluster growth on the top line, and you have got cost pressures, which are very evident, rising electricity prices, we saw where that fuel price went, uh, and various other cost pressures across the board. So what are you doing to protect margins? Yeah, absolutely, and, and if you take Tiger Brands as the example we're using, they're under pressures themselves to meet lower imported product prices. So they will not accept us just passing on energy increases of 25% and saying your can is going up by X percent. So we have to find other ways of reducing costs and that's consolidating operations, automating, doing whatever is required to get our costs under control because we simply cannot pass on prices to client base at the moment. You mentioned the glass industry and the potential there. You spent uh, 304 million rand refurbishing your glass furnace. You've also got a 50% stake in Vegan Glass. So, so what, what, are the, what is the potential within the glass space right now? 
you know, we see glass as a, a core business for us going forward. And we've invested, as you say, about a billion in buying out our shareholders, 400 odd million now on refurbishing the plant. We'd, we'd like to add more capacity in South Africa when the market grows sufficiently. And we also see an opportunity for glass in Africa. It's the only product that we currently manufacture that we're not doing in Africa. Everything else, metals, plastics, paper, we do in Africa as well. So where you're eyeing, what, uh, what market do you think you could potentially set up a glass manufacturing yeah, site? It would have to be one of the bigger markets. So it would have to be a market like Nigeria or Kenya or in Angola. It, it couldn't be one of the smaller markets like in Malawi, say. Um, but certainly, anything we in the pipeline? We're looking. Let's just say we're looking at the moment.